done uh, electronic waste in the informal sector for over 15 years. I've had my ups and downs. I've been learning small, small to the level that I've been able to start adapting best practices with time. As we speak, um, I think uh, I have uh, brought on board over 2,000 practitioners who are doing, yes, in the informal sector, who are doing things based on the best practices. We, we would start with uh, like not burning of uh, cables in the open air, uh, not burning CRTs like the way we did the other day. Um, we, also, we are also very careful not to allow electronic waste to mix with water so that it doesn't seep some of the hazardous components into water and the soil. Uh, we are also educating our people on how to use better tools. We used to use traditional hammers or even stones to uh, dismantle all this kind of electronic waste. Now we have adopted new ways and better technologies, even though they are manual. We are doing things using the right tools. Even though we do not have the proper machinery, we use the most basic tools to do things in the correct way. For example, before we never used to use iron keys, we used to get access and break into the waste. But now we are able to purchase those screwdrivers which are on key, open nicely, and we get more value for whatever we recover. It was out of a necessity need because with time, very many informal e-waste handlers have died. And uh, the ailments that took them to their deathbed, they are related to the electronic waste activities. Of course, these were the crude methods like burning of uh, cables, like uh, um, some of the medical equipments that we manage are very hazardous. They contain very bad and hazardous components. So we have tried to get a lot of training materials online so that we may be able to understand, even before we dismantle a certain gadget, what is the composition. So I'd say now it's better than before. And uh, very few people have ailments emanating from our activities. Uh, like uh, five years ago, my, my leg was numb and uh, it swelled. And I was told some of the activities that I'm carrying out could be the possible cause of the same. But I had stepped on uh, CLT grass which was broken and was lying on the ground. I was able to seek medical attention. And I decided, no, this had to stop. It is me today. I don't know who is going to be, uh, or who it is going to happen to tomorrow. And maybe they do not have that uh, capacity to even seek medical attention. Some of us will ignore, and then they later die because of just a small injury. <laughs> our main challenges, we have quite a number of challenges. One is our operating space. Uh, our spaces are very small. We have very informal structures. By these, I mean they are not permanent structures. We do also have a challenge of uh, floods, whenever there are floods, because we have uh, occupied a space which is close to a riparian area, where the rivers, the river banks, sometimes they will break, and uh, they will come and wash all your e-waste. So that is also another challenge. Another challenge that we have is uh, training. Most of us do not have formal training, even, even though we know how, what we are doing. So we self-educate ourselves through YouTube channels, online journals, and maybe interactions and uh, like uh, visits to the WeCenter. That is not enough because most of the activities that we carry, technologies changing every day. So we would uh, say that training is a big challenge. Another, another th thing is about uh, uh, tools and machinery. We do not have up-to-date 
tools, I will not call them state of the art because if we go for the state of the art are very expensive, but they are tools that we currently do not have access to, maybe because of pricing or availability. There is also the issue of the problematic fractions, which do not have value. We still stockpile them and they occupy a very big of our space. And also we don't want to dump it in the liver. Oh, this is the most amazing thing that ha will happen to the informal sector because I will pass on the information that I've learned to them. After this, I will go and try and make an association, a replica of what South Africa is doing. I'll also learn from what Ghana is doing. Another thing, it was a platform to open up my eyes. It was an eye opener because I've interacted with a lot of international people. Now, I would say I have a little bit bigger networks than before I came here. I also have a platform to engage whenever I need assistance, like maybe technical, you never know, even maybe financial. Yes.